So I was prescribed medical cannabis for my fibromyalgia in the UK. And here's what happened. So guys, have you seen from the uh, title of the video, I was prescribed medical cannabis um, for my fibromyalgia in the UK. So I'm gonna go into detail um, on this because there is a lot of detail to go into. So um, having tried um, multiple different um, pharmaceutical medications, nothing helping me. Um, and if you guys are following me here randomly on YouTube, um, the majority of my followers and my content is put over on my TikTok. And the reason I mention this is because of the fact that um, during loads of my videos in the comment section, loads of people will say, have you tried cannabis or have you tried medical cannabis? Okay, so the first thing I want to go into is that I live in the UK, the United Kingdom, in England. And in um, England or the United Kingdom, basically um, cannabis is um, illegal. So cannabis is not legal in this country. Um, cannabis is not legal in this country. Also, I thought, well, basically cannabis is illegal in the UK um, for recreational use, um, but you can be prescribed it. Um, and you can only be prescribed um, medical cannabis in the UK by the NHS um, if you have, um, I think it's one or two different um, conditions. Um, I believe one of them is um, MS. Um, and I believe one of them is um, if you have some convulsions um, from a certain cancer medication. I could be incorrect, but I know that the NHS um, only prescribe um, medical cannabis um, for certain conditions. It's definitely not fibromyalgia. However, if you in this country, which I was shocked about, want to pay privately for your cannabis, you can. So um, I was put in touch with a private clinic who um, obviously do medical cannabis um, and um, I had to go through a procedure. And the, what the procedure was, was <clears throat> I, I, I put my interest to them and um, they asked me to fill in forms and to tell me if I was okay to proceed that that kind that that first step. Then what they would do is they would um, then what they did is they said that they would um, contact me um, via um, a a Skype call or a FaceTime or a Zoom call, a video call basically, um, to have a conversation with one of their doctors. Okay, so when I had this video with this doctor, and I think it was about a month after my initial contact with them. So when I had the the um, uh, video message with the video call with the doctor, um, the doctor was, um, the doctor asked me loads of different questions. So she asked me, what condition do I suffer with? She asked me how the condition affects me, what are my symptoms, what medications have I tried, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, there was a few stipulations um, regarding you being able to be um, prescribed medical cannabis. And um, they was that you had to be, um, you have to be diagnosed with something and um, so it has to be a formal diagnosis um, and they actually check this. So they ask you for your doctor's records, what doctor surgery you go to, and they ask you if they're allowed to proceed to contact your doctors and get your records um, to tell if to, to see if you're telling the truth, basically. Um, and you also have to have tried two medications for this diagnosis. So obviously when they went and they checked my um my my doctor's notes and um, they seen all of these things they seen i was diagnosed formally with fibromyalgia and they seen i had tried 
different medications for my fibromyalgia, different pharmaceuticals. Okay, so that was the first step. Um, and then um, during the the um, the call, the lady has asked me, um, have I ever tried um, cannabis before? Um, if I have, what form have I tried it in? So on and so forth. Um, and the what I said to her is, um, I've never tried cannabis before. Um, and um, I don't smoke, never have smoked or vaped, so I would rather take it orally. And the reason I say this is because they offer it in three different, um, three different forms. So they either offer you it in the bud form, in the flower form, um, so you how you would expect to see cannabis on the street. And um, they offer you it in um, oral form, so um, how you would expect to see it, um, like um, how normal CBD comes, say, in, in a bottle, which is um, a liquid. And then a vape form, I believe. So obviously, like I said, I haven't smoked before. I don't want to add to my ailments. Um, I'm used to taking CBD orally, um, sublingually under the tongue. Um, this, to me, was the safest way to go about it. She explained that we're going to start you on this strain. You need to see how you get on with it. Um, and then we will report back um, in in a month or two. Okay, so now I want to go into um, how I was told to take it so um first off i want to say that it was very expensive it was um 175 pound plus 10 pounds um plus 10 pound um delivery so it's 185 pound and it lasts you um a couple of months if that um yeah so it's not a couple of months it's less than a couple of months um and I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, that was the price point. So I agreed to the price because there's no... Um, obviously, you can't not agree to it. You have to agree to it. Um, and what they do is when they send it to you, they give you instructions and they give you a little um, syringe. Um, and um, I don't know if syringe is the right word. So it's the thing without the needle. Um, you can withdraw the liquid from the bottle. And you have to start very, very slowly. So you have to start on a 0 0.01 mil or 0 0.1 mil. So it's tiny. It's like this much. Um, and then you, you, you take that every day for a week. Um, and then after a week, you up your dose to 0 0.2. So on and so forth to the maximum dose of 0 0.5. So it's half a mil. So 0 0.5 is about this big. A mil is about this big but very very small amount um the i got to the 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 and i had the worst panic attack of my life um guys i normally suffer with panic attacks i'm not going to go into this too much but a panic attack i suffered did not last the 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 20 minutes 10 minutes it normally lasts the ones that i've had over the years it lasted a good four or five hours and i was convinced i was dying um I came off it, um, I gave myself a rest, didn't know whether it was just a, a a panic attack randomly or if it was to do with the the medical cannabis, um, but I decided to go back on and try it again because obviously I'd spent £185 on it. Um, same thing happened, slow increments went up to 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 and the same thing happened, the bad, bad, um, horrible... Um, uh panic attack happened again so um i stopped it i stopped it guys i think the dose that i was on was um i think it's called i think it was called 1020 1020 yeah so i think it's 20 percent t to uh, 10 percent thc 20 percent cbd and what i want to state to you guys as well is um as you may know i use cbd myself my CBD, um, I've been using for a year and it's been unbelievable for my anxieties. It's, it's stopped my panic attacks and my anxiety. So I was very shocked that this um, had done this to me. But some people have told me it may have been the strain um, that I was taking. Um, and it's, it's obviously the THC, so the psychoactive part of the cannabinoid. Um, either way, I wasn't happy to proceed with it. Um, and I have just stopped taking it. I have not only just stopped taking it because um, of the strain and what it done to me, because um, 
speaking to the doctors at this um, clinic, they told me that these things can happen and you need to try different strains and different strengths um, to find the right one. Okay, so that's all well and good, but the problem with that is how long would it take me? So I've spent 185 pounds on this bottle. I've taken probably, there's 50 mil in this bottle and I've probably taken about five mil from the bottle, maybe not even that. So I have wasted um, more than three, three quarters of this bottle. Um, it's just sitting there doing nothing because I can't take it anymore. Um, and this company wants me to try a different strain or a different percentage. So that's all well and good if I pay another 185, but then what if that one doesn't work um, and I've wasted 185 pound there? And then if the next one doesn't work and I've wasted 185 pound there? So that was one problem. I'm not a rich man. I couldn't afford to do that. Like I say, it's not on the NHS, it's not free, it's not subsidized, it's fully out of your own pocket. Um, so I couldn't afford to to do that. Um, one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing, was my driving license is very important to me. Um, I um, My business is driving, um, how I make my livelihood is driving. If I lost my license, um, I would lose my livelihood um, and I have got family to feed, so that would not be very good for me it would be very, very detrimental to me and my family, um, as you can imagine. So one of the things that I asked was, can I drive with THC? Because everywhere tells you, I watch loads of um, police shows, they tell you you can't drive on THC, any trace of THC. However, um, the first doctor said to me, yes, I believe you can, but you need to check with the company. She's just a doctor. So ringing up the company and speaking to the company, they said, yes, you can. So I went into detail with them and said, by law, not not just because they said, you need to see how you're feeling on that day if, you, if you're driving. It's just like a medication because you've been prescribed it. I said, by law, if I get pulled over and they do a drug swipe on me, will I be over the limit? Because I know I will be because I would have been taking it that day. First of all, the answer that she gave me, I didn't, I didn't really like. She said, why don't you just try it at the weekends and see how you get on? Let me tell you, if there is a, a, a medication or anything that's going to change your life, you're not just going to take it on a weekend. You are going to take this daily because you're going to want, to want it to change your life as it is. Um, plus, it stays in your system for a lot longer than the weekend. If I took it on Saturday and Sunday, it would be in my system Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So that was horrible advice from her. Um, then I started to realize she doesn't really know the ins and outs. Um, then after doing a lot more research into it, it is a very, very gray area. Um, if you have been prescribed medical cannabis, there is still a huge, huge chance that you will be prosecuted for driving under the influence, regardless of you being prescribed medical cannabis. Um, you may get a lenient police officer who pulls you over um, and if they do do a drug swipe and it comes up you could explain to them that it's medical cannabis you don't smoke it you just ingest it so on and so forth and if they're very lenient which probably won't be and they probably don't know that you can get these things for these ailments um, then maybe he might not prosecute if he does and you go and you get arrested and you get summons to court maybe um maybe the judge might be lenient and um, maybe the judge won't um and if the judge don't then it is an automatic ban so to me i wasn't willing to take that risk at all um so that was a very big factor so so basically having the first scare with the anxiety and the second time with the anxiety and the price and the very great area um, on whether you can drive or not basically just put me off um, there was too many cons there was too many cons compared to the pros um, so so yeah I, I stopped taking it another big thing I think um, which I didn't really like at all is that um, because at the moment it is illegal in this country um, unless you're prescribed it it's because the government is making no money from um, the street dealers and so on and so forth. Um, but 
it's all well and good for it to be privatized um, and they will take the money tax wise from these private companies. Um, I just think it's just a bit disgusting that they, in the mainstream news, they say we ain't we ain't gonna allow cannabis in this country because it's this and it's that. Um, but yet um, they will sell it um, through private companies, get the tax money from them, um, and it's all well and good if it helps you for an ailment. Um, I hope that's coming across right, but that's how I felt. Um, yeah, secondly, um, the price I think was ridiculous um, from this company. Um, there used to be some kind of scheme, I think it's called the T21 scheme, which the lady told me they don't run anymore and it puts a cap on the amount of money you can spend um, or they can charge you, they don't do that anymore. Um, so so yeah it was it was atrocious and then um before i even got anything i had to pay a hundred pound i think it was for a consultation so i had to pay a hundred pounds to speak to this doctor before they let me even be prescribed it um and then you can get repeat prescriptions via an app but you can only get two repeat prescriptions and then you have to have a follow-up consultation with your doctor and guess what this follow-up consultation costs between 50 and 100 pound so it's a massive money spinner um unless you are um filthy rich um and unless you um don't mind if the the driving thing doesn't bother you then yeah go for it um but like i say it didn't help me um this not to say that it doesn't help everyone because that's what i was trying to get into earlier um it has helped millions of people around the world um, and the government want to do it through a private way so they can just get their get their um, taxes from them at an extortionate rate to people um, but not allow it um, not allow it legalized like it is in many countries so it's just a, it's just a massive money spinner guys I hope this was a bit of an insight into into um, medical cannabis and um, how it is in the UK and um, privately and not privately and how it affected me for my fibromyalgia. Guys, if you've taken medical cannabis for any kind of ailment, um, whether it be fibromyalgia, MS, anything like that, please let me know. Please let me know what form you've used, what strain you've used. If it's helped, if it didn't, um, let me know. Let me know price, all, all that good stuff down in the comments below. Guys, like I always say, I hope you're having a low pain day and your fibro flare-ups are I'll catch you soon.